It's Vision Sunday, everybody. We're seven years post-relaunch at Vertical Church. God is faithful. God is good. God is so good. Can I just talk a little bit about what we started off this year with a series entitled Multiply. Multiply your God-given potential. Uh, By the way, next week, we're going to start a new series entitled Family Values. We're going to talk about relationships, family and friendships, and how to have wisdom from God's word for our relationships. Can I get an amen? Amen. I want to kick us off in Ephesians chapter 3. If you have your Bible, use those fingers. Do some finger Bible exercises. Get to Ephesians chapter 3. If you're online, make sure in the chat you type what an amazing church and what a handsome pastor. Type it in the chat. The Lord loves it when we're honest. (laughs) Ephesians 3, (laughs) verse 20. If you can't tell, I'm excited about today. Ephesians 3, verse 20. It says this. It says, now to him who is able to do, check this out, immeasurably more. Like you can't even measure it. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Somebody say immeasurably more. To God be the glory who could do immeasurably. Like, Like if I said from here to here, you can measure it. It's from here to here. You can measure it. Immeasurably means it's, it's, it's so much more that you can't even, you can't quantify it. That's what we're going to give God glory for, for what he's doing not only in our lives, what he's doing in our families, and what he's doing in our church and in our community. Can I pray for a second? We pray? Yeah? Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you. Because you are a God who can do immeasurably more than what we can ask, think, or imagine. To you be the glory today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to take advantage of today and share a little bit of a story and also a little bit about where we're going. And I'm just praying that through this, the Lord would speak to you right where you're at. And those of you who are members of this church, you're going you're gonna to love the fact that we're reiterating and re-communicating just the heart and the vision of our church. And if you're new, man, what a great Sunday to be at Vertical to understand everything that we're doing. Amen? Amen? Um, we have a little soundtrack. Did somebody leave that there? Yeah. yeah, somebody left a little soundtrack there. If one of my ushers or somebody leader here can come and get a phone that was left by somebody, it has a little natural soundtrack um, that maybe the Lord's trying to show, I don't know, like Star Wars or something. Um, <laughs> all right, so everybody say 29. 29 years of ministry is what have officially been done here at Vertical Church. We are here today standing on the shoulders of men and women that have gone before us. And can I just say this? Can I say that my parents, Pastor Virgilio and Pastor Maruja, Sierra, they are the founding pastors of this church. And we would not be here in this building and in this church if it wasn't for them. And if there's, if there's any reason, I know you guys see a platform that I'm standing on, but really it's their shoulders. And our generation is standing on the generation of men and women who have gone before us to set a firm foundation. So we can, can we give it up for pastors Virgilio and Maria Sierra? What a blessing. And, and by the way, they're still here every Sunday. Five services, they're here. Praying, saying hello, serving and loving people, leading life groups throughout the week. That's the type of founding pastors that we have. 29 years of legacy. In addition to, in addition to, uh, to them as pastors, there's many people who have been on this journey since before, um, even before the church was planted. People like Pastors Jose and Cecilia Figueroa, their children. Maria Jose, I saw Maria Jose, oh, she was here in first service. Laura, uh, um, Laura Diaz. People that have been here from before the beginning. Uh, 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 Pastor Jorge and Marina Sierra, who helped co-lead the church in, in, in the first years. People like my sisters, Pastor Claudia and Pastor Cesar. Um, my, my older sister, Mari, Pastor Mari. Uh, man, it's amazing for people that were here from before the beginning. This church actually started as a life group. 
It was a Monday night Bible study. So my parents came from Columbia. They came here to the U.S. They met Jesus here. They knew about God, but they didn't know God. There's, two, there's a difference, right? They knew about God, but they didn't know Jesus, right? And here's where they, they, they started to have a personal relationship with God. And, and um, I, I was actually born here. I'm the only one from my family that was, that was born here in the States. So I'm, I'm gringombiano. I'm gringombiano, which means... I'm gringo and colombiano, right? Um, the interesting thing is when I was about two and a half is when my family met Jesus. And our family has never been the same. And, and what started off as a Monday night Bible study life group with my dad and his guitar and my mom and her tambourine and people with the song sheets and then Bibles open to study the word of God. It was a life group and it just kept growing and flourishing for eight years, for eight years. My dad didn't want to be a pastor. He just wanted to teach the word and, and worship with people. And eventually on April 4th, 1993, officially our church launched having its first service in the Rock Creek Country Club in Cooper City. Uh, what an amazing story from that point to this point. The church just kind of kept getting, we kept out growing spaces in, in like storefronts and shopping centers. Like one was probably like less than this section over here of the auditorium. That was all we had, you know, in the back was like for little babies. And like that's all. And then little by little, the church, we just kept growing. And, and then fast forward a bit in the process, I, I helped eventually kind of lead and pastor our worship team for my father. Um, eventually, just and I got married in 2004. A lot of ministry, a lot of heart, a lot of serving with a lot of us who were there back, were here back then and, and also serving. Um, awesome to see just what God was doing. I, I had a moment in, in uh, close to 98, 99, where I started a, a, a Christian band with, with some guys from the church and uh, Contagious, and we ended up for 20 years touring and traveling the, the states and, and Latin America, South America, Central America, Caribbean, taking our music to different parts uh, of the world, which, which was a school and a ministry growth opportunity for me. I met a lot of people, made a lot of connections in that process. My wife and I got married 2004. Okay, fast forward even more to a point where my wife and I started really feeling and sensing a call of God to continue the legacy. My parents kind of casting vision as well to, to me about the next steps of the church and eventually transitioning uh, to passing that mantle, passing that baton over, uh, the torch to lead the church. And what a, what, a, what a big responsibility and what big shoes to fill for us um, to honor my parents' legacy, but then to continue it going to where God wants to take it. And so our prayer was, Lord, we feel a calling to continue the legacy that we've been given, but, but as, as much as we're honoring the past, we also want to keep our eye open to the future of what you're calling us to do. And so the Lord started to speak to us. We started getting equipped, uh, going to conferences, meeting with pastors and, and churches that were a few steps ahead of us and, and, and started learning a lot of things, especially in how to do church and new strategies, especially since the vision was kind of amplifying. When we relaunched the church February 1st of 2015, the relaunch came with a new name. So, so in 1993, uh, the church was Iglesia Buenas Noticias de Fe that my parents planted. Then in 2015, we relaunched as Vertical Church or Iglesia Vertical, not because we wanted to just change it up, but because vertical is spelled the same in both English and Spanish. Vertical, vertical. We wanted one name so that it would be one logo, same heart, because we're one church, two languages. We wanted to work in both. This was part of the vision God was putting in our heart, hearts. And... What we realized early on is that pastoring is not easy. <laughs> when you're leading, there's a lot of opinions, especially of people who've been here for 20 years and why are we changing things? And initially, I can't blame them, not understanding or knowing why we're shifting and changing. Not the message, not the gospel, not Jesus. He never changes, but how we do church and then getting people to just trust us in the journey, right? Anybody was here during the relaunch? Anybody was here when we actually relaunched from Buenas Noticias to Vertical? Yeah, some of you remember that, right? And man, what, what, what changes? But we began to see growth great fruit from a lot of the, the shifts and adjustments that we made, um, understanding today's culture, understanding our generation, understanding the fact that my wife and I have been called to be bridge builders. We feel called to be bridge builders, to, to build bridge of languages, English and Spanish, to build bridge of generations, the older, my parents' generation, which I understand and I love and I get, but also the younger generation uh, where there's a little bit of a gap between that one and this one, right? And helping to bridge the generations and then helping to bridge culture and, 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 and just, just how we do church. So I wanted to, before I show you guys a video, I want to just, just spend a few minutes on talking about who we are at Vertical and who we are not. Is that okay if I do that for a moment? Uh, especially because it's good to review this because sometimes you might not know or if you're new, obviously you're, you're learning a little bit. Number one, we are an independent, non-denominational Christian church. If somebody asks you, what kind of church is it? 
you can tell them, oh, it's an, Vertical is an independent, non-denominational church, which means we're not connected to a specific denomination, right? Like there's some churches that are denominational, like Baptist churches or Presbyterian churches or Pentecostal churches, or right? So we're independent, non-denominational. We are connected to a family, a tribe of churches called ARC, Association of Related Churches, okay? Uh, and, and so specifically, ARC is interdenominational. There's churches of all kinds, uh, and it's more about the, the model of church that we have, life-giving church, right? Uh, our church is governed by a church, our church government, which has three branches. Branches. Our church government is guided by the lead pastor leadership team. This is a, a, a kind of a, a small team that's very close to me as far as the day ins and day outs of ministry. Then we are protected by the board of trustees. Trustees uh, is a group of uh, people who, who are non, not compensated by the church and they are not blood relatives or family of mine uh, who are able to make sure that internally and externally we have eyes on the finances of the church, that we have healthy church finances and order, uh, that we are accountable and that we're doing everything legally and correct before the law and the IRS. And so we have internal and external eyes and uh, they help make the big Big finance, any big financial decisions, including in Jesus' name, soon in the near future, finding our building that we're going to have for Vertical Church. And our church government is strengthened by overseers. So I have overseers who are spiritual fathers and spiritual brothers who oversee me and care for me spiritually and are in touch with me on a consistent basis, and they cover the church spiritually. Okay, Pastor Robert Berger from Camino de Vida in Lima, Peru, amazing spiritual father. Uh, Pastor Alan Platt from Doxadeo, uh, City Changers Movement from South Africa. Um, uh, Pastor John Ellswick from a local church community here, Crossway Church. He's like a brother in Christ. We kind of grew up together. Uh, and of course, Pastor Virgilio Sierra, our founding pastor, who's, who's here and has a voice uh, over my life and over the church as well. Uh, here at Vertical, we believe that the Bible is the only and true infallible word of God. We believe that. We believe that. We believe that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is central is the central foundation to our ministry. It's all about Jesus and the gospel, okay? Now, I will mention this. We are not embracers of reformed theology. For some of you, this makes sense and you understand what I'm talking about. Some of you, it may not, and you might not even care, but we like to let you know, let, kind of let know where we are, right? We are not embracers of reformed theology and there's multiple reasons why we are not embracers of reformed theology. Um, let me mention this. We embrace a life-giving church model that has an outward focus to reach the lost as well as an inward focus to disciple believers and build the church. So it's both and, not either or. So some churches and some denominations and some theologies, they kind of choose either or. We are both and. Everybody say both and. Okay, we believe in preaching and teaching the Bible in series and themes like we do throughout the year. And we also believe in expository teaching where we teach and preach by, uh, books of the Bible. You know, we believe in both and, not just either or. We also believe that we need to bring relevant messages where people just connect to the Bible and understand God's word. Um, we believe that the gifts of leadership and pastoring are not just for men. We believe that women are also called and gifted by God to lead and shepherd people. We are egalitarian, not complementarian, okay? I'm, I'm getting into some doctrinal and theological things. Some of you, this might mean a lot. Some of you are like, I don't care, pastor. You, I like how you preach. My family's growing, and I want to keep growing spiritually. I love this family. Praise God. But I do want to bring it for people maybe that this is important. We believe we are, we are egalitarian, not complementarian. There are some denominations and lines of Christianity that do not believe that women should lead or pastor or even speak to wherever there's men or other people. We don't believe that. We believe that God gifts, just like the parable of the talents, he gifts, he, he's, he doesn't discriminate, oh, you're a woman, you can't have leadership and you can't have pastoring. No, the gift of pastoring is somebody who cares for sheep and cares for So we believe that women have, there's some women who have a stronger gift of pastoring than some men who have a pastor title. So we believe that God gifts in leadership and in pastoring and bo both and, not either or. We also believe in all of the gifts of the Spirit. We are not cessationists. Cessationists are those who believe that some of the spiritual gifts like tongues, prophecy, and healing ceased back in the apostolic age and are no longer in the church today. 
We don't believe in cessationism. We believe that the God who healed in the past has the same power and gifting to bring healing today, and he, he can move and work in the prophetic, right? We understand there's an order and a way for everything, so we don't like to make church weird or spooky. We're not about that, because sometimes church can get weird and spooky. So if you're getting more attention about by what you're doing, I don't know that the Holy Spirit's getting any glory, right? So we know that there's order for everything. We do believe in gifts, the gift of tongues, or even just the prayer language. The per- it might not even be a gift, but just pr- my personal prayer language language with God. There's something beautiful that comes in my connection with the Holy Spirit where I am edified. I don't have to go shout it in front of everybody so everybody knows, but I, I, I edify myself personally. All of the gifts of the Spirit are beautiful and wonderful. They come from the Holy Spirit who is God. Amen? So lastly, we believe in sharing the good news of the gospel with everyone all of the time as much as we can. Do, do we hear that? We believe in sharing the, the, the gospel message with everyone all of the time, as much as we can. We believe that even though God is sovereign, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. Why do I, why do you say that, Pastor Verge? Because some Christians and some doctrines and some lines of Christianity believe that we don't have to worry so much about looking out because it's already, be pre, it's already been predestined. And if you are the elect, you are the elect. And if you are not the elect, that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. We don't believe that. We believe that there's this mysterious combination that I, won't, I don't think we'll ever understand on this side of heaven between God's sovereignty, which means he knows it all, and, and man's free will given to us as a gift by God. So we believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish and have eternal life. That's why we do care about sending the message out, not just focusing on who's out here because, because they're already predestined and elect. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, praise God. So what I want to do right now is I want to say, as a church together, man, we have done so much. So, there are so many victories to celebrate, and we just wanted to put a video together about 2021 because there's so much that we were able to do because we've been united that if it wasn't for the fact that we were united, it would be impossible. Tell two or three people, say it would be impossible. It would be impossible. Take a look at these victories on this annual report video 2021. Check it out. Twenty twenty one was a year of building great momentum. We have seen our church come together under one vision and mission to be one church, two languages. A church that points people up to God, teaches them to follow Jesus, and equips them to make a difference. And church, this past year, we did just that, as we saw amazing growth throughout the entire year. God provided many opportunities for us to serve and love our community. We have watched marriages, families, and people just like you and me be transformed and make a decision to trust Jesus with their lives. 2021 has been an incredible story of changed lives, significant growth, and serving our community. Throughout the last seven years as Vertical Church, we have welcomed more than 4,058 first-time guests. That number, 4,058, truly matters to us and to God. Why? Because every number has a name, and every name has a story, and every story matters to God. As we continue to see our church grow every month, we saw the need to create more space for God to move. In November, we went from three in-person services to five in-person services, not only adding more room and opportunities for people to come to church, but also opening up for the first time in the history of our church, our second English service in the evening. As a result, we saw a 34% increase in our weekly Sunday attendance. In 2021, we continued to trust the Lord throughout the many waves of uncertainty that impacted our world. Taking steps of faith, we continue to build His kingdom. We were able to experience extraordinary Easter and Christmas services in person again. Powerful experiences full of life, faith, worship, and God's presence. We ran with full commitment to our mission as Vertical Church. We aimed for every person that walked through our doors to take a next step in their faith, helping people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. 
As the year progressed, we began to see so many new faces and families that have now become a key part of our church body. As a result of your faithfulness to share personal invitations with friends and family, about 1,084 people walked through the doors of Vertical Church for the first time in 2021. But church, our greatest victory is this, seeing 811 people take the step to follow Jesus or recommit their lives to him by raising their hand in a service, bringing us to over 4,500 decisions for Christ since our first service in 2015. We also saw 98 people take their next step in publicly declaring their commitment to follow Jesus by being water baptized. Our VSM student ministry has also experienced great growth and momentum. We had an average of 126 students at our monthly VSM night. We saw more than 100 students connect relationally through our weekly VSM life groups. A total of 165 new students came to Vertical to hear the gospel of Jesus and connect with other students and leaders. For God's glory, there were 153 salvations through VSM each number representing a student that decided to give their life to Jesus. 38 students took their next step in their faith to be water baptized, truly incredible. We love to see the next generation of kids also growing and thriving in Vertical Kids, from packed classrooms on Sundays to fun life groups throughout the week. Vertical Kids are connected to the vision of our church. So many kids grew spiritually at VBS and over 1,000 people enjoyed a spectacular family fun night. A record number of families dedicated their babies to the Lord and committed to raising their children up according to God's word. We are filled with joy to see our little ones growing in relationship with God and with each other. As we started 2021, we transitioned from having online-only life groups to both online and in-person life groups. We were able to equip, empower, and train up 38 new life group leaders to lead small groups in our community. Throughout the year, we had over 200 life groups, that's a record, in person and online, in English and in Spanish. We saw over 857 people connect in intentional relationships via life groups that provided a place for people to experience community, find freedom, and take next steps. Through the vertical growth track, we saw 112 people take the next step in discovering their redemptive purpose and live the life God created for them. Each person took steps that helped them connect to the church, grow spiritually, discover their purpose, and learn how they can make a difference in the lives of others by using the gifts God put in them. Our impact team also grew. Together, we worked hard, accomplished great things, and impacted countless lives. Throughout 2021, we saw over 400 people activate their spiritual gifts by serving God and others via our impact team. In 2021, we truly made a difference in our church and community through our generosity. We were faithful to give of our time, talents, and treasures to build God's kingdom here on earth. Here in Broward County, here in Sunrise, Weston, Davie, and all of South Florida. We gave of our time and energy. During our annual Vertical Serve Day in July, over 416 people came together to be the hands and feet of Jesus by serving our communities through 29 different community service projects. We also gave of our treasures. In 2021, we saw a 6% increase in our regular giving, receiving over $1.9 million in tithes and offerings. Within our general operating budget, we continue to exercise good stewardship, allowing 26% to be set aside for reserves and expansion as we are believing for and preparing for the new building that God has for us. As a church, we also continued to tithe. In 2021, we tithed 10% of every dollar received, which means that together we gave over $190,000 as a church towards missions, missionaries, benevolence needs, church planting, ministries, as well as outreach via Christian organizations that are making a difference in the community locally, nationally, and globally. We are also overjoyed to announce that in 2021, we officially launched the Legacy Team. This team is designed especially for those who have the gift of giving, commit to giving above and beyond their tithe, and view giving as an act of worship. 
Over 70 members have joined the team and have committed to giving extravagantly in order to accelerate the vision of this house. Church, your contribution is an essential key to all of these victories. Your giving of your time, talents, and treasures has truly made a difference. We are so much stronger together, and with God, all things are possible. And we believe that God will continue to use us to help others know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We have a big and unique calling here at Vertical Church to be one church, two languages, and to lead the way as a bilingual church in this world. So to all of you that call Vertical Church your home, we wanna say thank you so much. Let's not forget the impact that we are making. Let's not lose heart or grow weary of doing good. We are filled with great faith that greater things are coming in 2022 for God's glory, more than we can ask, think, or imagine, as we continue to be faithful stewards and multiply what He has entrusted us. Come on, church. That's awesome. Well done. Well done. That's so good. Come on, tell three people. That's so good. Come on, type it in the chat, everybody. That's so good. Look what you did. Look what we did together, everybody. Man, what great victories. That's a story we got to tell. Those are testimonies and victories we have to celebrate. Amen? Amen. God has big, big plans. Psalm 65, verse 5, it says, Lord, you answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior. He answers with awesome and righteous deeds. Man, what a, what a, what a beautiful <clears throat> demonstration of what we can do together. Because I can do some things by myself, and you can do some things by yourself, but when we come together... God will do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine. Just so you guys know, we are, my wife and I came out of 21 days of prayer, specifically praying. She actually came out a little bit more fired up than me and saying, we need to become a lot more aggressive in finding that building. So in 2021, we are committing to put the foot on the gas pedal and in Jesus' name, let the Lord lead us and God. I think the Lord already knows where it is. He already knows when it is. But we're going to pray, Lord, let it be sooner rather than later. We'll continue to be faithful stewards with what we have. But like we learned before in Multiply, right? If we're, gonna fa we're faithful over what we have, God will put us over more. So in Jesus' name, help us pray as we begin to put the foot to the pedal and say, Lord, take us to the place. Take us to the promised land that you have for our next building. And by the way, not sh shortly after or maybe even before, I don't know, we might have a second campus. That's another thing we're praying about because there's reasons to take God's church and to new places and reach more people. We're excited about that. We're, we're, we're right now in the works and praying about having a rendering done soon so we might be able to see it, see what it might look like. We know, we know exactly yet, but what it could look like. And, and in Jesus' name, we're going to be praying for that and working on that. Uh, this year is going to be an important year to work on special goals for 2022. We're going to be doing our DNA nights on Friday nights, by the way. Uh, we just had DNA night this first Friday, the first Friday of every month. DNA night is when we, our whole impact team, we all come together and we just talk culture, leadership, DNA, and what the Lord is doing in our church. This past Friday, we just had an opportunity to just talk about the story and how everybody, all of you are part of the story that God is writing here at Vertical. And I want to encourage you, if you're on our impact team, be here for DNA Nights. Because it, we had, anybody come for DNA Night? Man, it was powerful. And, and we had about half of our impact team here. So half of our impact team had a powerful moment of unity together. And I really wish that the rest, so whenever we have DNA Nights, and if, you, if you're on the impact team, man, be here. And if you're not on our impact team, finish the growth track and get on the impact team. Because our impact team is pretty good, but if you were on it, it would be even better with your giftings and your talents and your, the, the resources God has put in your hands. We believe that our team could be better. Um, praying a lot for leaders and leadership in this season. Praying for a lot of growth and for expansion. Praying for that new building. Praying for new campuses. And I believe the Lord's going to take this to, to new campuses in other countries as well. We already have a, a campus in Barranquilla, Colombia in South America. I believe there's other countries that God wants to take vertical. So step by step. Step by step, we're going to be seeing that vision come to life. 
Now, you might be thinking, Pastor, why, why so much noise about the victories? Why so much noise about church? Why does this all even matter? To which I would say, let me tell you what breaks my heart. What breaks my heart is the spiritual lostness, the social pain, and the cultural brokenness in our society today. Spiritual lostness. Did you know that according to Barna studies from a few years ago, we talk about this a lot. I don't know if there's a new study, but a couple years back, according to the studies, 3% of Broward County would be considered evangelical Christians, churched people. 3% of Broward County. Think about that for a second. Three out of every hundred. Like if there's a hundred people in your neighborhood, only three. There are so many people to be with. There's so much spiritual lostness. That breaks my heart. Because some of those spiritually lost are our families, our sons and daughters, our parents, our neighbors, our colleagues, our classmates. Breaks my heart. What, you know what breaks my heart is the social pain. There's so much pain and so much wounds in today's society and in families because of fractured relationships, fractured and mess. The, the enemy's just doing a spell on, on marriages right now like, like never before. Uh, broken relationships, lack of identity, abuse, offenses, not to mention pandemic impl implications. The soul care issues that are now coming to light from so, like talk about the devil's strategy to keep people in caves. Think about it. For literally over two years now. How else could the enemy affect souls and hearts by keeping people hiding in fear, in insecurity, socially distancing? Breaks my heart, all of the repercussions that are coming for young people, for marriages and families, inside and outside of the church. Breaks my heart, the cultural brokenness that we're seeing in our society. The amount of division, the amount of criticism, the racial tension, the political divide, the masked, unmasked, vax, unvaxed, the, 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 all of these secondary, and again, in my perspective, very demonically pushed situations throughout the world right now to keep people divided breaks my heart. This is why our community needs vertical church. And for that matter, more life-giving churches. In, in, in Luke 4, I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds to get to Luke chapter 4. Jesus picks up the scroll from the prophet Isaiah and he begins to read. And it kind of explains what we need to do because that's what Jesus was called to do. And Jesus lives in us, remember that? <clears throat> Luke 4 verse 18. And Jesus reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, there's the word, anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of, sign, of sight to the blind, <clears throat> to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Freedom! To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So, so here's the three major outcomes we want to see. Because of the spiritual brokenness, the social pain, and the uh, uh, spiritual losses and cultural brokenness, these are three major outcomes we want for our church. We want to, number one, we want to help reach the lost with faith. We've got to speak about our faith. We want to help heal the pain with love, which comes from God. And we want to help restore the brokenness with hope. Faith, love, and hope. This is our why. Now, it's important that at least once or twice a year, you, give me the, you allow me the opportunity to talk vision. Imagine a cup, and imagine a cup full of water. Imagine if the cup has a little hole on the bottom, what's going to happen eventually as time goes by? The water is going to spill out. So we have, we have a cup, an organization, a church, which is a vertical church, and the vision is in, but over time, vision leaks so we have to clarify the vision. I have to cast the vision. I have to cast it clearly, compellingly, in a consistent manner. That's, that's my responsibility as the leader. Now, let me talk about purpose. Why do we exist? Vision, where we are going or, or what we want to become. Mission, what we want to accomplish. And strategy, how we're going to do it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Purpose, why do we exist? Help me out. Vertical church exists to point people up to God, teach them to follow Jesus and equip them to make a difference. We are one church, two languages. That's part of our DNA. It's part of what God's called us to do. What's our vision? Where are we going? Here it is. Here it is. To be the best bilingual church in the world for unchurched and for churched people. 
It's part of the calling God's put us here. The vision is big, right? To be a bilingual, life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational, life-giving church that ministers to the whole family and welcomes people of all backgrounds. We are a unique church in a unique city, living in a unique time. And we have a strong personal conviction that God is calling us to lead the way as a relevant and influential bilingual church in the world. This is what we're believing and we're dreaming even for this year. Opportunities that we're gonna be able to invite pastors from Latin America and Hispanic pastors from the States to come and just learn some church systems and strategies to help their congregations grow. Not to mention other churches that are like us that wanna raise up a bilingual, whether it's English Spanish, whether it's English Creole, whether it's English Portuguese, or whatever to let, but there's going to be people that are going to want to learn because they're going to have a similar calling and they're going to say, hey, vertical is a point of reference. Let's learn. And all of us, when I say, hey, church, we need some volunteers because we have pastors coming in internationally or from other states, would you help us uh, host them and help us serve them? And you're going to say, here we are, pastor. We're going to serve and we're going to invest because that's going to result in, in lives impacted in other places and we're going to sow some seeds. Can I get an amen? amen? We're believing this with all of our hearts. Throughout all of God's word, from Genesis to Revelation, we see over and over God's vision for every human being. What is his vision? Let me put it in simple terms. God's vision is to see lost people saved. In other words, people who don't know Jesus to know Jesus personally. Because nothing else can happen spiritually in the life of a person if we don't get step A. Secondly, to see saved people pastored cared for, discipled, because here's what happens. We can get saved, but that doesn't mean that all of our baggage and issues are dealt with. We get saved, which praise God, that's, a, that's, a, that's salvation of our souls, that's forgiveness of our sins, but you can be saved and not free, which, which, is, which is why we want to help people be discipled and take steps towards freedom, to find healing, to find victory, to get through and past a lot of that stuff. Then to see pastored people trained, discipled, taught, discovering their giftings and their abilities, and then to see trained people mobilized, active. How do we know when we, the church at Vertical, are doing this vision right when we're seeing lost people get saved? Praise God for those numbers. Did you see those numbers? We're doing our job. We're doing our job when we're seeing people take steps. So this is God's vision. God's vision is our vision. Our vision is God's vision. Uh, One of the ways you can see our vision and our mission, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go together. Ephesians chapter 1. There are many biblical references that kind of point to these same four things. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16. Paul writes, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, watch this, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, because you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may, you may what? Know him better. The first step is for people to know God, and you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's not just you get lucky. You need God to open that door. So know him better. Verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Pause, pause. Last time I looked at a heart, does a heart have eyes? No, Paul is making a reference to spiritual or internal eyes. Paul is saying, I want your lights to be enlightened, your heart, the eyes of your heart to be enlightened. Why? Because in life, we go through so much junk. Everybody say junk. We go through so much junk and so much pain and so much baggage that what happens is the eyes of our heart get cloudy and they get, they get dirty and our lenses are dirty, and the health of our life is dependent on the clear clarity of our lenses, and when the lens of the eyes of our heart are dirty, we're not seeing the right things. We're seeing from a dirty, so what happens is everything is tainted. We're not free. We're not not able to see, and it is when we go through a process of beginning to find that freedom where the Lord begins to clean up and wash us up that, ooh, we begin to see appropriately. Freedom. And then it says, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. You know what brings the most hope? The fact that you have purpose. The fact that your life matters. Now, if you didn't have any purpose and your life didn't matter, then hopeless. Hope. You have purpose. And then it says, the riches, he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Holy people, we're part of something. There's a part of this plan that's not just me by myself. It's not me, myself, and I. It's part of, I'm part of something bigger than me with you, and together we can make 
a difference. So what's the mission? What do we want to accomplish? Here's the mission. To help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. I thought I might get five people. Let me try it again. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. It's easier when it's on the screen. I know, I know. <clears throat> My goal is that you guys can state this without even needing the screen because you got it in you. This is our vision. This is our mission. Now, now the question is, we know the vision, where we want to be. We know the mission, what we want to accomplish. The question is, what's the strategy? How are we going to do it? So every goal that we want to reach needs a system, a pathway to get there. So here's, here's let's talk about the strategy, which is part of the, the system. What's the system we have set in place at Vertical to help people know God? The system is called Sunday services. Come on, tell somebody that's where we're at. Tell them that's where we're at right now. This is Sunday service. This is the system we use to help people know God. Secondly, what do we use to help people find freedom? Life groups. What's the system to help people discover their purpose? Growth track. That's the four steps of jo kind of joining the church and saying, I want to be a part of what God is doing. I want to help serve. I, want, I don't want to be just a consumer of church. I want to be a contributor of my church family. Amen? And then fourth, what's the system to help people make a difference? The impact team. We're all serving, whether it's on Sundays, whether it's throughout the week, whether it's here, here at church, whether it's in the community, we are part of the impact team. Okay, so just really quickly, know God. Know God is Sunday services because there's a lot of people who know about God but don't know God. It's the same way you can know about LeBron James. You can know about Cristiano Ronaldo. You can know about Joe Biden, but it's very different to know them. Is everybody with me? Matthew 7 has a cool way. <laughs> cool way. It's kind of harsh, but... Look what it says in Matthew 7. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Pause. How can you do the will of the Father who is in heaven? The only way you can do the will of the Father who is in heaven is when you know the Father who is in heaven. <clears throat> and then it says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do good works and do this and drive demons out and perform miracles? And then I will tell them, Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I don't know you. And you don't know me. Because it's easy to think and assume, I, I know. Because they know about, but they don't know God. <clears throat> Are you guys with me? Yeah. All right, find freedom. The system we use is life groups. Everybody say life groups. <clears throat> intentional relationships with other believers, whether it's learning and growing through a curriculum, whether it's a fellowship activity, whether it's a high spiritual intensity life group like freedom or a low spiritual intensity life group like, you know, soccer with the guys or basketball, but it's always with the intention of relationships. Our life groups are a place where you can experience community, find freedom, and take next steps. That's the heart of our life groups. By the way, we are starting life group season this week, spring season of life groups. Hey, you can always plug into a life group, even if you're new, even if it's your first Sunday, even if you're connected online. There's some life groups that are online, virtual. Some life groups are in person. There are some life groups in English and some in Spanish. There are life groups for students on VSM nights. There are life groups for young adults. There are life groups for men, women, for marriages. We have some great marriage life groups that I'm understanding right now have very few people si like signed up for them, and a bunch of you got some messed up things happen in your marriage. Can I, Pastor, why would you say that? Because it's the truth. We all need a little, bit of, a little bit of help, right? And we all need to walk through it. He, by the way, by the way, if you're the only one who knows your secrets, you're always going to be as sick as your secrets. You're going to be in trouble. That's why James 5.16 is important. James 5.16 is kind of our life group's verse. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Check it out. We confess our sin to God vertically for forgiveness but we confess our sin to each other for healing. That's why it's possible to be forgiven and not completely healed. And some of you, that's your next step because you love Jesus, you're saved, and you've been forgiven, but there's still some baggage you're carrying. And isn't it crazy how we see every life group season people go through a little group we call, have called Freedom, and they're like, this impacted my life. Why? Because you got into a group, men with men, women with women, where you were able to be genuine and authentic and realize, wow, I'm not the only one that's got some issues. Because we all got issues. And if you don't think you've got an issue, that's your issue. <laughs> the third, third one is discover purpose. We use the growth track, which, by the way, today, today is going to be, I think today's step one. Step one of the growth track. You can start the growth track fresh this month. It's at 2.30 p.m. in person. 
Um, I think this might be the last month we're offering an online version in the evening, so keep an eye on that. Um, we'd love for you to do the growth track. Discover, discover your purpose. Ephesians 4.11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, that's the spiritual leadership, for them to do the work? No, no, no. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Romans 12.6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Let's use them. Lastly, make a difference, which is the impact team. 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Here it is, as faithful stewards of God's grace, charis in its various forms. So how do we know if we're hitting the mark, if we're hitting the target? Success, here it is, success defined. Success is when people are moving on the spiritual journey that God has for them. We don't want to see you stuck in the same place spiritually. Some people are stuck for 10 weeks. Some people are stuck for 10 months. Some people are stuck for 10 years. We want you to break free and take next steps, no matter how young or how old you are in the faith. Okay? So let me close off by talking about this year, 2022. The theme for this year is multiply. 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 Let me think, let me think. Multiply multiply. What's the theme for this year? Multiply. multiply. We, start, we started an amazing series, right? And if you, if you weren't here, you didn't have a chance to hear all of them, go back to YouTube, watch them, or go to podcasts and listen to them. We talked about multiply. And it's all because our f- faithful is equal to multiplication. That this, is, this is God's heart. We see it in the parable of the talents. Let, let's, let's take this last peek in the word, Matthew 25. If you have it real quick, Matthew 25, Remember the parable of the talents? That Jesus is telling this story, this parable, about, about a, a master who had, who had these three servants, and he gave each one three, three different amounts. He gave one five bags of silver or talents. He gave one two bags of silver, and the other one one. You guys remember the story? Um, notice that he didn't give all of them the same amount, right? But he also didn't expect from all of them the same amount because God will expect from you according to the amount that he's given you. Now, now, we know in the story that the one that got five multiplied and now had ten. And the one that was given two multiplied and had four. But then, remember Bobby, right? Remember Bobby? That was just, by the way, it's not biblical. That's just a made-up name, right? Bobby had one and Bobby maintained. And he said, here's your one, right? So what did, what did the master say when Jesus is telling the story to the two who multiplied? Matthew 25, 23, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Praise God for that. But what did the one with one who only maintained? The response when he came to be accountable, his master replied, verse 26, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take that bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10. For whoever has will be given or whoever multiplies will be given more and they will have abundance. And whoever does not and just maintains, even what they have will be taken from them. And we saw in the story of the parable of the talents, that God has a more of a capitalistic mindset than a socialistic mindset because he took away from the one that had one and gave it to the one that had 10 who was being fruitful and multiplying. Can everybody say multiply? I want to see you multiply the giftings, the abilities, the resources, and the talents that God has placed in your life. No matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how long you've known the Lord or how new, freshly you are in the ways of God, He wants to see us multiply, not only as individuals, but in our families and as a church. I want, hey, we've done a good job multiplying. We've got five services. And you know what? Until God gives us that building, we'll keep doing it. By the way, just a little shout out and plug for 5 p.m. English. We really want to build that up. Help help us pray for strategies and think of ways where we can get more people. Because I want 5 p.m. to look like this. The Lord already showed me it's going to look like this. I just don't know how long it's going to take to look like this. Because, you know, it's 5 p.m. It's not 1045. So, you know, but, but there's so many people who need Jesus. And so I wonder if you guys could help us invite and multiply. So, in closing, why, why, why vertical? This illustration always is powerful. Okay, so I want you, by, by raising hands, how many of you, do, do you remember that, that first time when you made a decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Remember that? 
How many of you, that happened listening to a preacher on the radio? Raise your hand. Radio is where you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior from listening to a message on the radio. I'm not seeing any hands up. Maybe online there might be a few. Okay. Televangelist, right? There's a televangelist, you know, there's Christian TV. How many of you accepted Jesus for the first time with a preacher on television? Just impacted your life and you said, that's for me. One. Anybody else? There's usually a few hands, you know, for that. I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Anybody else? TV? TV? All right. Maybe online there's a few too. Okay. Good. Okay. How many of you, the Holy Spirit just captured you at home by yourself? You opened up the Word and you started praying and just by yourself in intimate. It wasn't a place. It wasn't a thing. It was just by yourself. The Holy Spirit touched you and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior alone. Just in your room, in your house. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anybody else? Your parents. Six, seven. All right. I, I mean, like, you, like, you, like, nobody invited you. You never heard of it. Just like, boom. all right, so about seven. All right. All right, good. So now here's my question. Here's my question. How many of you have accept, accepted Jesus because somebody invited you to church, to a church or to a life or a small group or a Bible study or a church? All right, turn around. Turn around. Look, 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 look. You see that? Okay. Hands down. It's because the local church is the gateway to heaven. Jesus is the door, but the local church is the gateway. By, by virtue of your own testimony today, hey, God uses, and by the way, we have a radio program, and the Lord does that, you know, uh, Alma Vision is in Spanish, 7.30 a.m., Mondays through Fridays, there's a five-minute segment that lets people know about, about the church, and God's using that, and, and the Lord will use a, a message on radio, the Lord will use a, a message from a preacher on TV, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will touch a person, you know, at home, alone, you know, or, or, or at work, or place. But, but the church, that's where, did you see that? Like 90 or 95 percent of us, so how do you think that 90 to 95 percent are going to come to Jesus? A local church, or a life group connected to a local church. That is why being here as a church matters. Because the local church is the gateway to heaven. And so I am praying that you would partner with us and that we would generate an invite culture. Because an invitation can turn into a salvation. An invite culture. Why? Because there are so many lost people who need to know God. An invite culture. Why? Because there are so many broken people who need healing from Jesus. An invite culture. Why? Because there are so many insecure, don't know their identity, where they are, where they're going. And God brings purpose to people's lives. Does that make sense? So can we just pray right now? Can we pray that in this season and in 2022, this would be a house where lost people come to be found, where people who are far from God would come close to Jesus and know him. Can we pray for that real quick? Lord, right now we come together. Come on, I want to hear some voices praying with me. Lord, we lift our voices praying that this would be a house of salvation, that vertical church would be a refuge where people spiritually come to life. I pray, Lord, that there would be salvation, reconciliation, restoration, redemption, healing, freedom. I pray, Lord, that you would do far and above and beyond immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine as this church continues forward. We love you, we honor you, and we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.